Good evening there everybody, what is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So I thought that I would review this little video because I found it very, very interesting. I thought all in all that we would talk about a possible upcom excuse me, upcoming rematch that I've been hearing overall is very, very possible. And that is the long-awaited rematch between Jamel Charlo and Brian Castaño. Or somewhat long-awaited, I guess, because, of course, that is the last match that they had. And, you know, that match recently happened this year. So, <laughs> it is what it is. Anyways, Jamel Charlo versus Brian Castaño, I think, all in all, you know, very decent fighters. Would I necessarily call them A-plus fighters? No. I think that they are A-grade fighters, but I would not call them A-plus fighters. I think that you have different level of A-class fighters. I think that you have certain fighters like, you know, if we're just comparing the middleweight divisions and super middleweight divisions and the, you know, light middleweight divisions, I think that fighters like a David Benavides or a Caleb Plant or a Billy Joe Saunders or a Demetrius Andre or Jamal Charlo, because I think they're pretty much all along the same lines, I think that all those fighters are A class. I think that they're above the A minus level because I think there's something about them that makes them pretty decently talented. But all in all, you know, like I said, there's just nothing there that I would say makes them significantly A+, plus, at least from what I see. When you talk about the A-plus fighters, there's only two fighters within those weight divisions within the past five years, at least, you know, that have not retired yet, that I would say were A+. plus. One being, of course, you know, Canelo Alvarez, who in my opinion is, you know, the number one primer pound fighter in all the boxing today. And two being Gennady Triple G Golovkin. Because Gennady Golovkin not only was a very, very great athlete, he was a person that, in my opinion, had a decent amount of boxing skills as well. And when you have Jamel Charlo and Brian Gastonio, once again, I think that they're A-grade fighters, but I think that they're A-minus fighters. I think that if they were to move up and wait against a Jamal Charlo or against a Demetrius Andrade or something like that, could they beat him? Who knows? Maybe. But I doubt it. <laughs> that That's all to know what I say. So, it is what it is. Anyways, I am very excited for this rematch because, of course, we all want to see who really is the better fighter out of the two. Now, this is my opinion. I think all in all that when you actually talk about who is the more talented out of the two, I think actually that is Brian Gastano. I think that he's more defensively responsible. I think all in all that he's just a more skilled fighter than what a Jamel Charlo is when it comes down to it. I think that... They're both decent counterpunchers. I think all in all that Brian Gastano, he's a decent pressure fighter. He's just a very tough fighter. Jamel Charlo, he's a talented fighter as well, but he has a lot of the problems that you know his old his uh brother does uh, Jamal Charlo as well. His twin brother does Jamal Charlo, but Jamal Charlo is like a worse version of Jamal Charlo, which you know is not necessarily you know a one hundred percent bad thing because of course Jamal, in my opinion, is an a great fighter. But I just like I said. I've already given my opinion on both Charlo brothers. I think that they're very decent, but I don't see them as A-plus fighters. It just is what it is. Anyways, we're going to see overall uh, what happens with this, but this is going to be very interesting because both fighters are really going to have to prove themselves on a very, very high level in this fight. And we'll see all in all who takes the victory. Who would I personally favor right now? To me, it's really a coin toss. I would say maybe Jamel Charlo just by a little bit, but we'll have to see what happens. I think it'll be very, very interesting. Anyways, Dante's Boxing Nation, he's going to talk about it. Let's tune in. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? This is some really, really great news. One of the most highly anticipated rematches to be made in the sport of boxing is expected to go down in February, which is Jermail Charlo versus Brian Castaño, and they're fighting for undisputed, real undisputed. And what I mean by that is the winner of this fight. <laughs> Real undisputed. Basically, what is that, you know, saying? That's a shot at mainly Canelo Alvarez because Dante behind the scenes has a crush on Canelo Alvarez. <laughs> and on top of that, when it comes down to it, maybe a shot at Tifima Lopez as well. Bottom line is this, man. Canelo Alvarez, and I know a lot of people, they like to bitch, moan, and complain. Canelo beat Caleb Plant, Callum Smith, and Billy Joe Saunders. Now, if you want to say that David Benavidez is more talented than those fighters... That's up to you. Listen, bottom line is this. Maybe you can say David Benavides is more of a threat for Canelo than Billy Joe or, you know, maybe Callum. But, you know, those would even be debatable. Because even if we want to talk about Callum Smith, Callum Smith was the Ring Magazine champion for the 168-pound division. Don't get me wrong. David Benavides, I think, is a very decently talented fighter athletically when you talk about his physicality. 
But when you talk about his skill set, once again, David Benavidez, there's certain Mexican fighters that I look at and I think that they're really, really special. And there's certain Mexican fighters that I take a look at and I say, they're just another straightforward Mexican fighter that, you know, likes to fight in the middle of the ring. And David Benavidez is one of those fighters. Don't get me wrong, he's somewhat talented, but have I ever taken a look at David Benavidez and said, wow, that dude really is going to be a top 10 future pound for pound fighter? No, I've never said that. It's just, it is what it is. Now, a lot of other people, they may. I just, I personally have never seen that. When I, when I think of the most talented Mexican fighters out there now, or Mexican-American fighters that I can think of, I think Canelo is hands down the most talented out of all of them. I think Oscar Valdez is up there. I think that Virgil Ortiz certainly is a great talent. Uh, you know, I believe all those fighters are of Mexican descent. Uh, David Benavides is talented athletically, but skill set wise, I don't think that he has an A-grade skill set. That's just my opinion. It is what it is. He's too defensively irresponsible. He's too hittable. When it comes down to it, I'm not saying that he does not have decent power, but, you know, his power does not really accumulate from single shots. It accumulates from punches and bunches. You know what I mean? So it just, <laughs> it is what it is. Like, I, I'm trying to think of a fighter to necessarily compare him to. You know, certain fighters that they may not have a great power, they may have a little bit of power, but the majority of their power comes from they just hit you so many times that after a while that, <laughs> you know, you just kind of go down. Like, what David Benavidez is, he's kind of like the Max Holloway. Actually, that's a very good comparison. He's kind of like a lesser version of Max Holloway for boxing. Because Max Holloway is very, very similar. You know all in all that he has a great gas tank, but Max Holloway for his sport does not have a great head movement. He doesn't have a great defense. If you have great striking ability and great counterpunching ability, you can counter him extremely well when it comes down to it. And, you know, on top of that, sure, he's very physically gifted, but his skill set, in a sense of words, in my opinion, very vastly overrated. <laughs> but it is what it is. Anyways, when it comes down to it all in all, we'll see what happens with that fight. I do believe more than likely that fight will happen eventually. But we'll see. Canelo Alvarez, after this Alunga fight, he may choose to face Archer Beater Beaver Dimitri Bavol. But like I said, Canelo, he is going to have to face a clear A-grade fighter after this fight. Because if not, he is going to get a lot of criticism, even from me. Is truly the undisputed champion and the best fighter at 154, which is one of the most deepest divisions in the sport of boxing. See, when it comes to Canelo Alvarez, Dante just says that it's one of the most deepest divisions in boxing because there's multiple black fighters there. <laughs> that's that, that's that's the only thing he says. And anywhere where he's trying to prop up one of his favorite black fighters, he basically says, "Oh well, that's one of the deepest divisions in boxing." I don't understand how 154 is the deepest is one of the deepest divisions of boxing. Now, if Canelo Alvarez was fighting those guys, what would Dante say? He would say, all in all, that Canelo is facing nothing but, you know, washed up black champions. That's all he would say. Because really, if we're going to go there, who besides Castaño and Charlo, who really is there that is A grade? I mean, Erickson Lubin, you know, Tony Harrison, Jarrett Hurd, <laughs> you know, a washed up Arasani Lara, who I believe now is at 160 pounds. Like, who is there that is a great? I'm sorry. He fought against the... You know, Julian J. Rock Williams, who has a chin made out of tissue paper? <laughs> he gets champions. He never fought the most dangerous and the best fighter in that division, which is the lineal champion, David Benavidez. This is why you have to give Jamel Charlo a lot of credit. Because he could have been like Canelo when Canelo avoided the Edeslani Lara rematch. Because that was a tough fight. At least Canelo fought Edeslani Lara. Neither Charlo brother ever called out Arasani Lara. Now, some people may say, well, that was because they were stablemates. They still could they still could have called out Arasani Lara. They didn't want to face his ass. It is what it is. Demetrius Andre was another fighter. He was calling out Lara for a very, very long time. But as soon as Lara approached him about the fight, all of a sudden, Andre, all of a sudden, his bark was a lot quieter. All of a sudden, he said, no, nah, I don't want that fight because Arasani Lara is a boring fighter. That's exactly what he said. So Andre and the Charlo brothers... They can talk all that shit all they want to. They didn't want to face Lara either. They never even fought Lara. At least give Canelo the credit of facing Lara. That most people thought that he lost, right? Jamel Charlo didn't have to take this fight because it was a unification bout. It's not as if this guy is as mandatory or it was a close bout and this guy had a rematch clause. Jamel Charlo is doing this because he wants to do it. Because he wants to be undisputed and he is going through some serious fighter to get that accomplished there was well he's facing an a-grade fighter he's facing a fighter that is on his level 
And that's what makes this fight very, very interesting. Once again, I don't think that either Castaño or Jamel Charlo are A, or excuse me, I don't think that they're A plus fighters. I think that they're both A minus fighters. That means what? If you're an A minus fighter, what does that mean in my opinion? That means that you are an A class fighter, but that means that if you were to jump to other weight divisions, you may capture a title, but you're probably not going to be looked at as the best there. So certain fighters like a Danny Garcia or a Sean Porter when they were at their best. Sure, Danny Garcia, he was looked at as the best at 140, but when he went up to 147 where the talent was a little bit better there, he was a champion there at one point in time, but Danny pretty much lost all the big fights there. He lost to Keith Thurman, he lost to Sean Porter, he lost to Errol Spence Jr., lost every single one of them. A lot of controversy that surrounded the first fight, but not so much because it was a draw. It was mainly because one judge had Jamel Charlo winning by a landslide. If all three of the judges had an extreme... And the Charlo brothers, for whatever reason, they get the benefit of the doubt on the scorecards. Could it be because they are a huge monetary asset or because they're worth a lot of money? Very much could be. Like I said, boxing, they follow the money. Just like any other sport, it is what it is. So don't expect a lot of fighters that are the A side all in all to... Uh, or excuse me, don't expect fighters who are the B side in a fight all in all to usually get the decision especially in close fights. It just usually does not happen. Extremely close going either way, there would be no controversy. It was a very competitive fight. So there's just so much heat at the junior middleweight division. I do agree all in all that it was a very competitive fight, but in my opinion, Castaño probably clearly should have taken it. Vision right now. I mean, you got, once again, Jamel fighting against Castaño, and then the winner of this fight is going to have to fight the mandatory Tim Zhu which is another really, really tough fight. Tim Zhu ain't that great of a fighter. <laughs> Dante always makes me laugh because, he, you know, you can tell which fighters he certainly likes and which fighters he don't like. Because Canelo Alvarez, he's been trying to tear down his competition the whole entire time. But Jamel Charlo, he's like, man, this dude might have to face Tim Zhu. <laughs> like, no one is taking a look at Tim Zhu right now and saying, oh, my God, he might beat Jamel Charlo. And anyone who is, they're delusional. Because Tim Zhu, don't get me wrong, I mean, he's he's decently talented, but he's he's not a person that I'd take a look at and say, wow, he's going to be the best in any division. I mean, come on. If you've seen Tim Zhu fight, you know, you know what he's about. It is what it is. So things are heating up at 154. I forgot about Erickson Lubin, who's also Jamal Char or Jamel Charlo's mandatory. But the biggest problem... Erickson Lupin, I'll give him credit. He ended up knocking out, I believe, that one dude, uh, Rojas, or whatever the hell his name is, uh, when it comes down to it. You know, he seems to be slightly improved. Could he maybe beat Jamel Charlo? Maybe, but when it comes down to it all in all, I, I, I don't know. Erickson Lupin, in my opinion, is not an A-grade fighter. Like I said, there's only two A-grade fighters in that division, in my opinion. Brian Castaño and uh, Jamel Charlo, that's it. Jamel Charlo or Castaño, whoever wins this fight is going to have is a Terrence Crawford problem because I truly believe it's going to be really soon that Crawford will be moving up to 154. He's been hitting at it for quite some Well, I'll say this. Whoever wins this fight, in my opinion, they're either going to be a Terrence Bud Crawford problem or an Earl Spence Jr. problem because Earl Spence Jr. has stated that he plans to move up to 154 eventually as well. So hopefully, hopefully, this is what I hope pans out you know this rematch happens in february from what i'm hearing that'd be a great fight and then from what i'm hearing all in all you know maybe uh terrence he'll fight keith thurman or someone in the early part of next year the first five months then maybe errol spence he'll have a tune-up within the first five months and then maybe terrence bud crawford and errol spence jr they can get on with it you know at the latter part of next year that in my opinion would be the perfect situation but of course not everything happens perfectly in time once again, finally, at age 34 or 33 going on 34, Crawford finally has all the options in the world. And I tell you, you know, when it comes to Crawford moving up to 154, when it comes to Jamel Charlo, I wouldn't be surprised if Jamel just moves up to 160. He's already talked about it. He's hinted at moving up to 160. So instead of if he were to beat, you know, Castaño, instead of him fighting Terrence Crawford, he might just move up to 160 because he's already said that he has no interest in fighting Erickson Lubin. So he might just move up to 160. So let me get this straight, Dante. Right before Terrence Crawford, all in all, <laughs> is going to move up there. Jamel Charlo is going to move out of that weight division. So are you going to call that a duck, just like you said with Canelo Alvarez? 
or are you going to have no problem with that? Who he knocked out, what, three, four years ago. But I can guarantee you if they have a rematch, the fight will not play out anywhere near the way the first one did. Erickson Lubin is a beast, and he just got caught with a good shot in that first. Erickson Lubin is okay. He's not an A-grade fighter. Like I said, if Canelo Alvarez was facing these fighters, Dante would be bitching and complaining. <laughs> fight. I mean, shit, Dante wouldn't even give Canelo Alvarez credit for facing Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs is hands down better than any of these fighters at 154. I don't even know if Jamel Charlo would be Danny Jacobs. It's going to be on some Ali Frazier stuff if they face off again, for sure. But once again, man, my hat goes off to Jamel Charlo because he did not have to take this rematch with Castaño. That tells me that Jamel Charlo, he truly believes that he's the best fighter. Right? We'll see about that. And I do give him credit all in all for taking this match. I think that this is a match where you cannot underestimate Brian Gastanio. Brian Gastanio, though, in my opinion, you know, like I said, I think actually all around, he's probably more talented than that of a Jamel Charlo. But Brian Gastanio, in my opinion, I think he showed Jamel Charlo a little bit too much respect in that last fight. Some people may disagree. Now, of course, you know, Jamel Charlo, he's an A grade puncher, at least for that division. So, of course, you don't want to, uh, <laughs> you don't want to overall, you know, run into something. But at the end of the day, Brian Castaño, if he wants to win, he has to throw consistently. And he has to attack Jamel Charlo consistently. Because Jamel Charlo is probably going to have the power advantage over him. And on top of that, Jamel Charlo, if the fight is close, more than likely, he probably is going to get the edge on the scorecards. So if Brian Castaño wants to win this fight, he has to be very consistent and he has to throw often. He believes in his ability. The selection of a fighter's opponents is a reflection of the confidence he has in himself. I mean, look at Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford has been chasing an Errol Spence fight. Errol Spence was the boogeyman. And Allegedly chasing an Errol Spence fight when he signed with Top Ring, but it is what it is. Instead of running away from Jason Voorhees, Terrence Crawford is actually chasing him. You got Jamel Charlo once again taking on the most dangerous fight he could possibly take. You got Devin Haney who wants all the smoke. He's called out every single fighter at 135. You got Shakur Stevenson who wants all the smoke, looking for the most dangerous fighters. Well, Shakur Stevenson allegedly wants to smoke. I believe that he wants to smoke with Oscar Valdez, but he talked a hell of a lot of shit on Vasily Lomachenko. I want to see all in all if he's serious about that fight. Because if Shakur Stevenson could win that fight, he'd probably have to be in my top 10 pound for pound. You got Arthur Better Biev, Gilberto Ramirez. They're all trying to, and Bivol. They're all trying to fight against each other. And while all of these fighters, oh, and Steve Fulton, Stephen Coolboy, who is another big star on the rise. He has a fight this week, and I believe against that one dude, Brandon Figueroa. And to be honest with you, I've never been impressed with either figure or a brother, but <laughs> Brandon, I do believe, is a more talented version of his brother. Who do I think is going to win that fight? I'm not really sure. If I had a better net, maybe Stephen Fulton, but it'll be interesting. He wants all the smoke, and he keeps dominating and stopping the most dangerous opponents in his division. You got another one, Aleem the Beast, once again going after all of the dangerous guys in his division. Canelo Alvarez is the only fighter who has no confidence in his own ability going after no confidence in his own ability but he just completed the unified division <laughs> over Billy Joe Saunders Callum Smith and Caleb Plant all right the weakest link in every and before that fuck Gennady Golovkin circuit Kovalev and Danny Jacobs like it is what it is once again I'm not saying that Canelo maybe does not do some maneuvering here and there but to say that he, on average, does not fight good competition, that makes no sense. Division he campaigns at. This is what makes Jamel Charlo look so good in taking this fight. I look forward to it. Once again, it's a 50-50 fight. But whoever wins this... I agree. That's actually one of the 50-50 fights that Dante talks about. That is not a delusional 50-50 fight. Because this is a 50-50 fight. If I had to guess, I believe that Jamel Charlo is probably going to pull it out. I believe that Brian Gustano, all in all, is more talented, but I'm not sure if he's more confident than Jamel Charlo. Because a lot of the times in that match, I think that the power kind of made Gustano kind of fall back. So we'll see what he does in this match. Fight is going to be high on that pound-for-pound -pound list. 
that's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next. Well, whoever wins this fight maybe could be on my pound for pound list, in my opinion. Certain people may disagree, but <laughs> like I said, these are the only A class fighters in that division, in my opinion. So I'm not sure whoever were to win this fight. I'm not sure if they would, you know, if they were on my pound for pound list, they would be at about number 10 or number 9. But anyways, that's about it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later. And we'll see who wins this fight. It should be very entertaining. But I'll talk to you all later.